Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. If you saw my previous video, you'll remember that I installed a solar charge controller and some batteries in this box trailer here. And uh, this is one of the Renault G Wanderer charge controllers, uh, plus some just regular flooded lead acid batteries. And I also have four pieces of 100 watt solar panels on the roof. And uh, long story short, this system is pretty cool for this trailer. Uh, but this is high tech lab, so we gotta upgrade this. So what I have, uh, this was a battery bank that I did some testing on. This is four pieces of Calb CA180 batteries, plus a 200 amp Dolly Smart BMS. I also have up here a Xantrex Pro Watt SW, uh, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And then over here, I have an extra Outback Flex Max 80. And while 400 watts will be a very tiny amount of power for this FlexMax with its 80 amps potential output, it's really going to do good at being efficient, making sure the system is operating, you know, at its best. And uh, yeah, so essentially we're going to yank out those lead acid batteries and put in these Calb cells and uh, I'll show you the whole process. So here we go. So these are the solar panels that we had installed on the roof. Those of you wondering, that's how the lap sealant looked when it leveled out. First thing we need to do is get these moving blankets and cover these panels. That way they are safe to work on the electrical aspects of this system. And like that, we're all covered up. So now it is safe to work on the electrical here. So I'm going to take my screwdriver here and go ahead and disconnect this. Now keep in mind, those panels are fully covered, so there's no worry about these being live at all. So that's disconnected now, so we're safe there. And now I can pull the fuse. It's typically bad practice, especially on these PWM style controllers, to disconnect them from the battery with the solar still engaged. So either way, I'll get that fuse disconnected and disconnect this whole positive cable for that matter and this whole negative cable that goes to my negative bus bar as well. So since we're changing out these batteries for those calb cells, I'm also going ahead and getting these all disconnected so that we could yank these out of here. So that's pretty easy. I've got them all fully disconnected. And now we can get this chemical cesspool out of here and all this weight. I mean, it's literally going to be half the weight or twice the capacity with these new calb cells. So with that space all opened up, I can pretty much take my screw gun and get this controller out. And now we're ready to install the new batteries. You'll have to bear with me here. I'm fitting essentially 20 pounds of stuff in a 10 pound box and somehow it can't exceed the weight limit. Either way, uh, I have the Flex Max here in my lap. Uh, that's gonna go right here on this side wall here. I did have to move the battery uh, disconnect switch. Now this isn't being used as a battery disconnect switch. Essentially what it's being used for is a like charge disconnect switch. So one of these cables goes to the uh, tow vehicle and then one of them goes uh, to our battery and then one of them is like the output. So essentially that allows uh, the tow vehicle to charge these batteries, which isn't always desirable. So anyway, the batteries are in here. That's where they're going to go uh, at this point. Obviously, I've been playing Tetris this whole time. Um, as far as where the BMS is going to go, I'm not exactly certain yet. Um, but then I'm going to have the inverter on this side wall right here. And like I said, Flex Max 80 is going to go right here. And uh, then we're going to do some wiring. So more as it happens. All right, so Flex Max is all mounted. I'm kind of getting these batteries uh, in place. I've got some blocks of wood down here that I'm just screwing into the bottom of the cabinet. Now here on the Dolly BMS, I flipped around these bus bars. Essentially, once this piece of wood is fully secured, that's gonna go in here. And the B minus is gonna go down like that, to that negative terminal. And the P minus is gonna go to the negative terminal on the inverter. That'll be somewhere about in here, because that inverter is gonna go right in here. And then uh, all the balance leads can plug right into the side of the BMS right here. 
nice and easily. And then um, this is the negative going to the bus bar. I'm just going to throw that on the terminal with the inverter there. And then uh, obviously positive is going to go on the positive of the inverter. And then all the other positives are already made up on that terminal there. The only other thing is I have to extend these solar leads a little bit uh, in order to reach the Outback controller's input. But yeah, I'm going to get these uh, batteries secured down and go from there. All right, so I've got double stick tape applied to the back of this Dolly BMS. And essentially what I'm going to do is stick it right there on the side of these batteries. Now these are all attached with wood. They're actually in here quite steady and I don't think they're going anywhere. So I can go ahead and get this B- minus connected onto this terminal now and uh, get it connected on up to the inverter. Okay, so things are starting to take place. Inverter is mounted. Uh, hard to see back there, but the cables are all on that negative terminal of the inverter. I don't have all the balance leads plugged into the BMS because uh, that's kind of keeping me safe with everything turned off right now. Um, so that way power doesn't flow. Uh, I'm going to just re-pull the wire. It's only number 12, uh, and that goes up to the solar panels up here. And uh, then I can actually make a more proper connection. I still need to get this piece. This is number six THHN uh, from this charge controller in here on the uh, battery negative terminal to this bus bar here. And then this piece of number six takes the power back to that negative lug of the inverter, which is where we make up onto that Dolly BMS that then back feeds through the battery. So essentially, uh, if you haven't already figured it out, this is a common port uh, 200 amp smart BMS. And that is kind of the most difficult thing to install because the cables are so short and uh, all the balance leads need to reach. So that's why I flipped those over. So Without further ado, let's get this uh, solar controller powered up to the batteries and get the wire re-pulled to the solar panels. Alrighty, so we've got new wire pulled in. Uh, it was all of, you can see that length over there. No big deal. So now I can bring these in through this chase nipple. I don't know if I showed you guys, I put a chase nipple in here for this Flex Max 80. I can now bring this in there and uh, that should be ready to go. And then we go ahead and get this all turned on and powered up. All right, so I got those solar wires landed in this Outback controller. I turned on the BMS. You can see there's the little red light in there. Inverter is powered up and turned on, and the FlexMax 80 is charging at like half an amp. Uh, if you can look outside, you can see the sun's kind of at a tough angle kind of setting. This thing just went into snooze mode. So yeah, essentially that kind of wraps this up. I mean, this system looks really small and simple, but it's actually quite powerful. I mean, I'm sure we can power a little air compressor. Uh, better yet, let's do some testing real quick and see what we can power off of this. Well, as you can probably hear, sounds like the tank drain is open on here. Uh, it'll run this air compressor no problem. Something's leaking here though. Not the tank drain. Oh, it's that fitting. Anyway, but yeah. 2,000 watts of modified, I mean not modified, pure sine wave power. So let's go uh, amps DC, zero it out, and C coming off the inverter. Let me turn this back on and we'll watch. We had 102.9. I hit the hold button here on the side and that's how we got 102 amps. So it'll run the AC or air compressor just fine. That's great because if we ever have to fuel up, I mean uh, air up some tires, or something like that. I mean, this is essentially our giant toy box in here, and we put razors, side-by-sides, that kind of thing in here. So uh, it's set to go. Uh, I have a heck of a mess to clean up now. And uh, yeah, no, that's it. Uh, we're good to go. So the only thing I gotta do uh, before this light switch right here, excuse the noise, uh, on and off, it's not obviously not working for these lights, but that runs down, I'm not proud of it, but down some speaker wire 
and that speaker wire used to turn on and off the power switch of the inverter. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'll probably run 12 volts down to a single pole, single throw relay. Um, that way, you know, that could turn the lights on and off. But yeah, uh, this is running the lights right now. That's what this cord is here. So you can see it gets dark, lights turn on. Uh, this is the air compressor, but yeah, pretty cool build out. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, be sure to check out my website where I do a full article on this in the link in the description below. Other than that, guys, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.